the the journey to finding Harlow and eventually getting a dog who was the right match for me and a team, it, it was a long one and there was lots of ups and downs and heartbreaks. I am thankful because of where we are now. Today I am doing a story time video. I haven't done one of these in a while, but recently I've been getting quite a few questions about service dogs I've had prior to Harlow. I'm not exactly sure what sparked the interest, but... <laughs> Seriously? Sorry, one moment. I am um, having a bit of a struggle with my dysautonomia today, resting heart rate all the way up in the 160s, tachycardia, just lightheaded and dizzy. So I'm running some extra fluids and my pump is being a brat. Give me one moment. <laughs> okay. Anyways, as I was saying, um, you yeah, know, we're gonna make a story time video about service dogs I've had prior to Harlow because she is not my first service dog. So prior to Harlow, I've had three service dogs. Those weren't my first dogs though. You know, growing up as a child, we always had dogs and we would rescue them from shelters. Anyways, when I was about 15 is when I started getting my diagnoses and really struggling with my health. And that's the time in my life where I crave independence, you know, I'm growing up. And so my family and I were looking at all the options to help me be independent while also being safe. And we came to the conclusion of a service dog. We were very new to the service dog world, naive, and we got scammed, basically. It's a horrible story that happens to so many families in the beginning of their service dog journey because we didn't know there were organizations out there that would take your money and give you a poorly trained dog. So we found an organization in South Florida that had a dog ready for me. That's flag number one. There typically is a wait list for reputable programs. They also said the dog would definitely alert to my seizures. I was having epileptic seizures at the time. I no longer have epileptic seizures, thankfully, because I am seizure free going on almost five years now. But regardless, back then I was having seizures. They guaranteed the dog would alert to seizures. That's a natural alert and not something you can guarantee. So that was flag number two. And then they didn't do much research into us, meaning they didn't ask for any letters of recommendations from my doctor or, you know, they took our word at face value, which I mean, we weren't lying about my health, but if they put so much effort and training and resources into this dog that they should also, you know, have a relationship with and care about, they should really look into the family it's going to be going to to ensure it's a proper placement so there were several red flags and i'm not saying that if an organization has this red flag they're automatically a scam no i'm just saying please do your research don't rush into things because unfortunately there are scam organizations out there anyways we went to south florida they gave us the dog we gave them quite a bit of money and then we came back home that dog was a German Shepherd, and I don't mean anything against other German Shepherds, but I called this the Shepherd from Hell because she tried to bite me, y'all. She tried to bite my teachers in school. And then finally, the last straw is when I was hospitalized, she grabbed the scrub of my nurse and wouldn't let go. Never did she ever actually bite somebody or injure anyone, but these behaviors were completely unacceptable. She also had extremely cystic ovaries and we had to pay for a very pricey surgery to help her, you know, like even though the dog wasn't working out and was like walking away when I was seizing, wouldn't listen to me, was kind of a danger to bring in public, we weren't gonna let her suffer. So we, we paid for her surgery and it just, it was a mess. And again, I was 15 years old. I didn't know this, <sighs> it was a mess y'all. Um, eventually we obviously acknowledge like this dog is not suitable for public access and she's not helping me. In fact, she's 
adding stress to our life. We tried working with so many private trainers to see if we could salvage the situation we were in, but the thing is not many dogs have the right temperament for service work. You know, it's not just about the training. They have to enjoy what they do and, and have the right temperament to, to do this demanding job while also enjoying it. And eventually my father decided he just wanted to put it in the past we gave the dog back to the organization and never heard from them again. I think it was just a really stressful thing for my parents because again, I was 15. It's not like I'm the one who paid, you know, my, my parents did. Um, so I kind of followed their lead and we decided to give the dog back and just be done with that and then continue on our journey to try and see if we could find a suitable dog to be my service dog. So then came Austin. Austin was six months old. We rescued him from a lab rescue in Tampa and we started working with a personal dog trainer, a private trainer who has experience in training service dogs and we looked through profiles of several dogs on the um, rescue website and I kind of just fell in love with Austin and then the trainer went to temperament test him, I met him and he was about six months old, nearly seven months old and we brought him home and I worked very closely one-on-one -on -one with this trainer but unfortunately Austin just didn't have the right temperament he was a bit too high strung he was extremely dog reactive as well we think maybe in his past he may have had some traumatic experiences with other dogs we're not sure because we don't know what happened the first six months of his life and the trainer determined you know Unfortunately, he just doesn't have the right temperament. You can't make a dog into something they're not meant to be. And it would be unfair to force him to work because it was causing him stress to be out in public and such. We really tried, but again, you can't force a dog to be something they are not. And also, Austin was not a good match for me, even as a pet. You see, I was 16 at the time, really struggling with my health. Austin was 80 pounds of pure muscle. I could not walk him. He would drag me to the floor. And anytime we were out for a walk and he saw another dog, his reactivity, not aggression, he had leash reactivity, meaning on the leash he would like bark and go crazy. And then as soon as he met the other dog, it was all happiness and submission. But still y'all, I sustained like scrapes and injuries and stuff from this dog pulling me to the ground. And my dad was just saying, you know, I'm sorry, you know, Jack, I don't think that we can keep him because he's, we, we can't meet his needs for exercise and you're not safe with him. Like what kind of a match is that? So we made the really hard decision and many people in their service dog journey have to make this decision to rehome him. We were extremely picky about where he went, but eventually we found a family with a pool, because Austin loved to swim, a big backyard, and several little pugs that Austin got along with so well, and they put him in agility, which he thrived at. You know, service work, not a great match for Austin, but agility, he loved it. He got the stimulation he needed, the exercise, the family he went to could handle his, his high energy and his strength, and again, it was a really hard choice, but it was the right one for us. If you've had to rehome a service dog or a pet for any reason, as long as you know it was the right choice for the, amino, for the animal and your family, don't let others put you down. You know, you can get a lot of backlash for rehoming, but it's not that we gave up on him. We just wanted to find the best situation where he would thrive and be happy. We weren't quite ready to give up after that. Now, after rehoming Austin, I wasn't ready to pursue another try for quite a while because it was pretty heartbreaking having to rehome him and I was starting to learn that this whole service dog journey there's more to it than we originally thought and it can be difficult in many ways like you know the emotional side and the physical side training your own dog when you're sick I mean that's why we originally went with an organization because we figured you know I'm too ill to train my own dog but after we got scammed by that initial one we were very afraid to try any other organization. Now there are great organizations out there, don't get me wrong, but just because of that bad experience, we felt that working with private trainers who have service dog experience was better for us. So eventually I we were ready to try again and we found what we refer to as a backyard breeder, meaning they intentionally bred their dogs, but they're not 
you know, professional breeder. Um, they kind of do it for, for hobby, I guess. And what we ended up with was Oakley, who is a golden doodle. He is um, F1B, he was 75% poodle, 25% golden, and this dog was great. We loved him, you know. He actually excelled very well with the service dog training, and I didn't work with just one trainer. I worked with several different trainers, y'all, and I started really learning how to train dogs since I was 15, initially working with the Shepherd from Hell because we worked with trainers trying to salvage it, and then, you know, with Austin, I worked with many trainers, and then with Oakley, I worked with many trainers. So over the span of several years, that's how I learned to train because I learned from the private trainers we worked with. Anyways, Oakley did well with his training, but unfortunately, at two years old, he developed arthritis in one of his um, knees, in his back right leg. And I cannot ask a dog to work for me if they themselves have health issues, you know? Service dogs really need to be in tip-top shape because their work is kind of demanding. I'm also utilizing them for some mobility support and so after speaking with the vet and really thinking it over, we decided to slowly retire him from service work. He liked to work, so I couldn't just abruptly stop him working, but we knew because of his health, he could no longer be a service dog. It was really sad. And that's when we realized the next step was to find a reputable breeder. So we tried all the routes, you know, we tried organization, rescue, backyard breeder, after Oakley is when we got Harlow. With Harlow, I really did research to find a reputable breeder that bred for temperament and health. Because, you know, with Oakley, it was, it was just so heartbreaking, y'all. We put so much time, finances, efforts into his training for him to end up with arthritis. That's why we wanted to make sure the next pup we got was bred for health and temperament to give us the best chances of success and longevity in their working life. And um, so we ended up with Miss Harlow, and as y'all know from uh, our, our YouTube channel and our videos, uh, the training with Harlow has gone very well. She is the first service dog that I personally trained myself without outside assistance. I felt confident enough to do so. I do have one of my favorite trainers on backup, I guess, you know, like kind of something I have just in case I need to consult with somebody. Um, I met with him a few times because I really wanted somebody's opinion on how Harlow was doing with her training and he was always very impressed. So even if you've got a lot of experience with dog training, if you're going to do owner training for your service dog, I do recommend at least having a trainer to fall back on, you know, if you just need to run ideas by them or get a second opinion to know like, okay, like validate that yes, things are going well. So um, then we ended up with Miss Harlow and well, you know, she's still working. She's going to be four on June 28th and She's a great service dog. Now, sadly, um, Oakley did pass away December of last year. We did not rehome him. He formed this huge attachment to my dad, and so my dad kept him, and he was just our family pet. But unfortunately, he started to have some GI tummy problems, nothing too serious, but then he very unexpectedly passed away. He was only five years old. It took us all by surprise and the vet said he probably had some health issues that you know was congenital and are you looking at the pillow anyways um that's my stories though those are my past service dogs the the journey to finding harlow and eventually getting a dog who was the right match for me and a team it, it was a long one and there was lots of ups and downs and heartbreaks but you know, it's a big decision. If you're going to pursue the whole service dog thing, my biggest piece of advice is do your research. Don't rush into anything and understand what you're getting into because it's not just getting a dog, you know, which that in itself, adding a pet to the family is a big decision. A service dog is a lifestyle change and it's a big one and it's not just about you. It's about your family and the dog as well. So that's kind of the brief version of our journey um although there it had its ups and downs i am thankful because of where we are now and i'm very happy with miss hippo sorry y'all i forgot to include some rather important information so i just want to insert this clip quite 
quickly before I end the story time video. So everybody's service dog journey looks different and that's totally okay. You know, I was just sharing my personal experiences um, about how I've gotten to where I am now based on where I've been and what we've been through. I'm not saying that my way is the right way. You know, whether you only go through organizations or you don't even have a service dog or you use private trainers, professional breeders, rescue dogs, teach their own, you know, as long as you're doing what's best for you and your dog, you know what's best for your team, all the power to you. And also a lot of people have been asking if my dad is going to get another dog. Oakley's passing was so unexpected and extremely hard on so many of us. So we weren't even ready to consider it, but now my dad has actually brought up the conversation. He's debating about getting another dog. Nothing has been decided, but we'll see. So just wanted to include that info for y'all and now we'll uh, end the video. So with that, we'll say goodbye. And thanks for joining us on our adventure.